Okay, so this is going to be an updated video to um, how to put in a uh, basically a drop ceiling. This is primarily for project one. I do have a YouTube video where we do it for our final project. It's kind of reviewing the same principles, but this is uh, a slower, more step by step version of what we're going to do in class together. So you can kind of use this um, for homework just to review. So I have actually two models up. I have one here where it's already done. So I'm going to show you what it should look like, kind of explain it a little bit. Then I'm going to go through it step by step and show how to build this sort of ceiling. So at this point, most of you have um, gypsum board or um, two by two or two by four drop ceilings in your space. So you'll kind of see it like this blocked in. This is what it's going to look like from above. So what this is, is there's two different levels of ceiling. So this one I think is at nine feet, this ceiling here. And I have can lights in here with the idea of if this is a conference room, they can like dim these lights for a meeting. This level here, I believe is at 10 feet. I'll double check in a minute. What we're gonna add in are all these tiny little walls. And this is where it gets a little nitpicky. But the reason we do this is because if we didn't kind of block this off in our render in our model, when we go to do the rendering, uh, sunlight's gonna flood through this area. And this is kind of like how they do it in real life. They're gonna build um, the ceiling part of it and then they're basically gonna close it off with little walls. Um, also, when you do this kind of um, additional kind of ceiling uh, geometry in a space, it's also called a soffit. So a lot of times you'll see them as rectangles, um, kind of uh, breaking up different types of ceilings. We're gonna talk about that a lot more in our final project. But let me show you what it looks like from the inside. So this is what the uh, room itself looks like. And let me kind of open this up a little bit more as you can see. Um, and so this level of the ceiling here, if I click on it now, this part is at nine feet. This part higher up, this is at 10 feet. And so the nine foot part is like the perimeter of the room. Then we're gonna cut the shape out for this square here. So this will be basically empty. And then we add another square up higher above, and in my case at 10 feet, where then I've hung um, kind of like chandelier pendant lighting that would be like over my conference table. That'd be a bit more dramatic. It'd spend some more money on this room too. Uh, when we go to do this together, I'm also going to show you how to do um, section marks. So it's like elevations, but we're cutting a section through the room. So we'll do this together. So these two drawings here are if I click on it and I say go to view, this is it right here already set up. So what you can see is here's the lower part of the ceiling. Here's the higher part. And then here's those tiny little walls. Um, one thing that's not obvious in here, but we're going to talk about um, in the final project too is you'll see in my model because these kind of uh, overlap just a little bit and intersect you're going to see kind of a black line let me see if it comes up here when i went to render it this part right here see where the edge where it meets it it kind of showed up as a black border it actually kind of looked sort of neat so i might leave it there but one of the things is if you want to not have that aspect you're going to kind of nudge this guy back and sort of kind of watch where this edge is. That's, that's what's happening when, it, when you're going to see it on my Enscape model. But I'm going to leave it there for now just because it actually kind of looked cool, that effect. Um, here's the other um, section. So if I go back to my level here, this one here uh, is looking, let's see, we're going to right click and go to view. And it's this one here, this long part of the room. So again, you can see the lower part of the wall. There's part of the, um, the, the can light that's in there. And then here's my chandeliers. And again, here's this, the top part. So we'll kind of go through this step by step. So you're gonna start this actually on level one of your ceiling plans. So in my case, I have to make sure I'm over in this area here. Let me get rid of that guy too. That was an old elevation. So to put in the ceiling, we're gonna go back over to architecture. We're gonna pick ceiling. And then you're gonna pick sketch ceiling way over here at the right. And then I'm going to get the rectangle tool and I'm just going to kind of uh, do the whole space here. So I'm going to click that, then click the green arrow. Now what I want to do, though, is before I exit from here, I want to edit the boundary and I'm going to now basically make what would be like the donut hole, the opening here. So again, I'm going to go over to the rectangle tool. I'm going to click anywhere here I want. Um, we can go back and change this too. So as I draw it in here, like if you want to play with centering it and stuff too. So a lot of students, again, we like our snap. So if you wanted to play with the math, like if this is two foot and you want it to be three foot, you could type it in here. Same with on this side, we want to make sure it's three foot. 
and now it's equidistant. So take a few minutes just to check on that, like make sure your math makes sense, because again, you're going to be telling people to build this for you. So in my case, I'm going to make this four feet. Um, maybe on this end, I'm also going to make this four feet because we can't, we want this to be logical. So now we're going to click the green arrow and then it's hard to see from here. Let's see what happened there. It looks like, oh, you know what? It's up too high. Let's go back over to the 3D model. This is part of where it's in the cut plane. So it's way over here. And for some reason, it, I, I forgot to check the height on this. I'm going to click this guy. I want it to drop down lower. Remember, I want this at eight feet. So I'm going to stick mine at eight feet and hit apply. And it should drop down. See how it's dropped down there. And now if we, oh, I'm going to have to go back and check my windows too. So let's make that nine feet. I think my original version of this was really more nine feet. And apply. Up oh, there it goes. Okay, so now it's, it's clear the windows. It's up above the windows. So if I go to level one, on my ceiling plan. So we we'll go ceiling plan level one. Got so much open here. Now you can see this, the shape here. So I'll try to remind everyone in class to check the height on that first. So next, what we want to do now is draw the square that's going to go in here. That's going to basically hover above that. So we're going to now again, go back to architecture, ceiling, sketch ceiling again. And I'm going to get a rectangle. Make sure the whole time you're in this gypsum board one, because um, in your conference room, we're going to have a higher end ceiling. We're not going to have um, the, the grid system here. So we have the rectangle. I'm going to draw it here. Now, this guy is up at 10 feet, which so far is OK for me. I want that. Um, so I'm going to click Yes. And so now we can kind of see the one structure here. It's not really lighting up the other because tricky thing with the, the ceiling plans here is uh, there's a range that's going to show us. We can edit this later if you're going higher than 10 feet. We'll play with that a little bit to make sure your lights show up. So far, it's OK. So we're going to go over to the 3D, take a look at that again. So here it is kind of hovering above. But right now, like I said, if we were to do a rendering, that gap, a ton of sunshine is going to like fly in there on us, which we don't want. So this time we're actually going back to the floor plan level one. And this is where we're going to draw those little walls. So I'm over on, here's my sample one here. Um, don't worry about the furniture being there. I'm just going to kind of draw around them. I, I roughly know where my shape is, but you're going to have to guess it at this point. So you're going to go to architecture wall and then wall architectural. And then pick the skinniest wall. In this case, it's that first interior three and eighth inch one. So you're going to click that. And then you're going to draw a rectangle roughly where you think. Now, in a nice way, it's it's kind of trying to pick up some math that's happening in the room. So maybe it's picking up with the ceiling. I'm not sure. We'll see what's happening there. It did kind of go down here, over to here, back up to here. So I've basically made a cube. And if we look at it, I've got a 3D version without the ceiling now. And you can see that, let's see. I've made this like cube in my room. Obviously we don't want that. We wanna pull all these little walls up. So this is where we're gonna use the section um, marker. So we're gonna go to floor level, our floor plans, level one. And now over to view, which is kind of far right here. You're gonna pick section, it's next to the little house. Doesn't matter which direction you start in, but we're gonna do a north south one first. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start up at the top here, left click, bring it down, make sure you're bringing it down nice and straight. See how it can kind of angle on you, but you wanna snap it to straight. Click that way, so that's one so far. Then we're gonna put in another one, basically going west east. So I'm gonna kind of go a little bit outside of my office here and then over to here. All right, that's pretty good so far. Now to go and look at this, I'm going to close some of the other ones off just so we don't get confused by old ones that we have up too. All right, so this is the new one here. So I'm going to right, I'm going to left click on it, then I'm going to right click and say go to view, and it's going to open it up for me. So now I'm looking at um, kind of the, the short end of my room. So if I pull it over a little bit, if you want to see. So here are the walls here that are that I put in the room. So the first thing I want to do is click on this wall here and see this little handle on the bottom. I want to pull it all the way up, whoops, to meet up with my ceiling right there. So that one's all set right there. This one, I'm going to move all the way up to meet up to my ceiling. But if you can see, it's way over to the left. So now I'm just going to use um, on my keyboard the uh, the right arrow key. I'm just going to literally nudge it over till it meets up with the ceiling right about there. I might have to um, 
we play with it a little bit the math but there it is meeting up i also because i have it pulled down like this this is where we're going to see it kind of cut through the ceiling a little bit so if you don't want that effect bring it up maybe about halfway this one here i'm going to bring up about halfway but we might have to come back and check it in a minute this guy here is one of the walls that we're looking straight on to so we're going to pull this one up and so far so good in this view so that's one section view so if we go back to level one that's one section view now before we go we can flip it to look the other way so we can right click it and see right now you can see this wall is still the only one kind of going floor to ceiling the rest are kind of floating up above so if you click on like left click on the the little arrow circle part and then you right click and say flip section it's going to look the other way for you now so then we can right click and then say go to view and now i'm looking at that wall that's going all the way to the floor so i can pull that guy up while i'm here i'm probably going to move this one see how it's too far over to the right i'm going to use now my left arrow and smoosh it over a little bit i might also stretch this guy out at some point too i might play with this in a little bit too so that's the the two sections that we've just played with so we're going to go back to level one now we're going to take a look at this section just to make sure everything's working too so we're going to right click on that say go to view and looking at them this guy again is off kilter a little bit so we're going to bring it over and i'm probably going to bring this one up just a tiny bit like that this one is going to go a little bit to the left and up a little bit too and watch right there i think it's connecting but we might have to watch for sunlight all right we're going to go back to level one again <laughs> and now we're going to click on this the section mark again and now flip it so right click and say flip section and then right click and go to view and in this direction things look pretty good so all right we're going to check it out in 3d again because again, it helps to look at all this stuff. So, so far it looks like these are all kind of, there's a little gap right there. So one of the things I'm gonna do is click on this guy, click edit boundary, and this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna go to the level one floor plan because now it's got a hold of that. And I'm gonna just extend this a little bit past the border of what's below it, just to make sure all my like walls are kind of all sealed up basically. All right, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit a green arrow. I'm going to go back to the 3D view again, see how that looks. Now it's looking like it's closed up. And if I want to spin around and double check it, it's worth taking the time now to kind of fuss and check everything. All right, so I'm going to pause it and put some lights in. So then you can kind of see uh, what it's going to look like basically when we go to render it too. Okay, so two things I want to show you kind of as I'm playing around with this. So to get the lighting in here, um, what you do is go to architecture component. So this is for lighting that you've already loaded the family. So if I hit place component, here's my recess lights. There's going to be a giant list of things as you start to download more th more options. So I, if you can't find it, just type in recessed and there it is there. So there's the six inch can light. Now for a conference room like this, often you're going to put them on each corner and in the middles because the idea is these are going to be a little bit lower intensity because you're going to be able to dim them to you know have like kind of a uh like a display on a screen and light it up these are also kind of all over the place a bit so i'd probably go and sort of move them around and make sure they line up a little bit with each other and clean them up um this is where revit is a little frustrating with the math of this um the other thing i'm going to do is this is one of my lights that i had already uh installed so let me just find the name of it just to remember what it is so it's lighting suspended okay cool so i want to put this guy in right here and when i try to put it in here you can see it's just it's not happy so um one of the things that's happening there let me, let me go back to the list here lighting suspended suspended that'll find it okay here it is here so see as i hover around it's just like no i don't know what to do um so what you want to do is go to the a 3d view of it let's see if i've got one inside you want to go into the inside so what we're going to do is we're going to say view go over to the little house pick the little camera get into the corner go like this 
So if you ever get a no sign on lighting, you're going to need to basically place it in a 3D view, um, just because it's 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 losing its mind kind of where it wants to go. So in this case, I'm going to architecture component, place a component. It's still highlighted. So if you see how as I scroll over, it wants to stick to the wall. It wants to stick up here. That's not where I want it. I want it up on this part right here. So I'm going to click once. I'm going to put another one here the second time. They look OK in this view, but chances are they're not centered very well. So we're going to go back to level one ceiling plan, which is right up here. Oh, no, nope, that was it. Here it is. Yeah, so they're kind of all, all over the place. I'm going to center them a bit more, move them around and see now they are kind of lining up, which is nice. And then we'll kind of play with it like that. And now I've got that uh, my can lights in and also some pendant lights. So I'm going to pause and set up some renderings to show you that too. Okay, so here's the conference room um, in just realistic detail. So it's this box way down at the bottom. I click realistic. The lights aren't on yet because it's, you know, we haven't done a whole lot of rendering in here. This is just the most basic version of it. So I clicked on Enscape and I'm going to hit start to kind of run the render. And it should go pretty quickly because I did this yesterday, but I'm going to pause it too, just so we don't have to wait too long. Okay, so here's the view of it in Enscape, um, and it's lighting up really nicely. So here's the can lights, they're lighting up. You can see the effect on the wall as the lighting kind of comes down the wall. Um, these guys are lighting up too. It's hard to see just because there's so much sunlight coming in here, and that's sort of the setting in Enscape right now. But if you zoom in, you can see that there's basically kind of like a little LED strip. It's also making kind of a neat um, uh, like shadow on the wall too. One of the secrets that we'll talk about in class is um, you can add lighting here in Enscape. So again, there's a whole library to add things. So we're kind of making you learn it the hard way using Revit lighting and using Revit to install your lighting. But as we get to your final project, you are totally welcome to use the lighting in Enscape because they are pretty and they're kind of fashionable. And they light up, they work really nicely because Revit lights have a tendency to, just kind of randomly shut off. Um, they, they can be real quirky. So Anthony and I are gonna, you know, encourage you and certainly obviously allow you to use a lot of the lighting instead in Enscape, just because we know um, you can trust it a lot better. And again, it's, it's more current trends and things like that. So we're gonna have you for the first project do our lighting in, in Revit itself, kind of like what I've been showing you here. Um, but once you start running it in Enscape, again, there's a whole library here of assets. So 